Greetings, my statistics friends. This is from chapter 8, and we're going to work out problem number 4 from our homework assignment. And that corresponds to section 8.1, homework problem 20 from our book. So in this particular case, uh, we are given some information about uh, the glucose readings from a horse. And so here are the data points, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 data points. And um, we're told what the sample mean is, and we're told um, that these represent glucose readings. And we are to assume that the distribution is uh, normal. And we know from past experience that the standard deviation for, uh, for this horse um, is 12.5 and the mean glucose level for horses should be about 85 milligrams per 100 milliliters. Uh, so does the data indicate that Gentle Ben has an overall average glucose level higher than 85 um, and we're supposed to use an alpha of 0 0.05. Okay so I'm gonna work through this problem uh, so part A, what is the level of significance? Well, the level of significance is always uh, just the same as alpha, right? So the significance level is whatever alpha is, um, in this case 0.05. And then state the null and alternative hypothesis. So the first thing that we always know for uh, a statistics test is the null hypothesis must always, with no exception, always have an equal sign. So it could be this one, or it could be these two. It can't be the second one, because that is not an equal sign. You must, with no exception, have an equal sign uh, for your null hypothesis. So it's either the first one, or the third one, or the fourth one. Um, and then the other thing that I'm going to look at is, it says, does this data indicate an overall glucose level higher than 85. So higher than 85. So for the first one, this would be our mu is lower than 85. This one would be our mu is higher than 85. And the last one would be this is our mu is not equal to 85. So I'm going to choose the third one because we want a higher, so our mu is bigger than 85. So if our mu is bigger than 85, this would be a right-tailed. If our mu was less than 85, it would be a left-tailed. But in this case, it is a right-tailed test. So we're talking about the probability under the distribution curve to the right. Okay. Um, what sampling distribution will we use? Well, we were told that x has a normal distribution. And we are also told that uh, we have a standard deviation from this horse from past experience of 12.5. So we're going to use the standard normal since we assume it has a normal distribution. But it says unknown, so that's not the right one. Standard normal since we assume that the x has a normal distribution with the known standard deviation. So this is the one. Okay, so what is the value of the sample statistic? And then what's the p-value? So this is where I'm going to use my calculator. So I open up my TI-84. And under the stats menu to the edit, I have pl uh, plugged in already these uh, eight uh, samples uh, that we got from the problem. And then what I do is go back to the home screen. And I hit statistics and over to test. And I want a Z test since we're doing the Z normal distribution test. And I hit enter. So then we also have two opportunities. We can have the data, which is the one we're going to use since we actually put the data in list one. And then the other way would be is if we were given a summary of the data, then we would put the summary information in here. But in this case, we were given the data. So we're going to use the data. And so this is the only thing that we really have to kind of think about what it means. This is the mean from the null hypothesis. 
and the mean from the null hypothesis is 85. And when we look at the problem that comes from, um, we're comparing what's happening versus 85. So that's uh, the notation's a little bit different from our book than what our TI-84 uses, but this is the mean for what's happening um, with 85. So we put an 85 there. And then the standard deviation for this particular horse from past experience was 12.5. I put the information in list one, and I'm going to use the frequency 100%, one times one for each of them. And then this is either not equal, and then left tail and right tail. And this is always kind of confusing which one I'm supposed to use here. If it's not equal, that's easy, right? But what does this notation on the bottom here mean? Well, just remember, this is uh, left tail and right tail. The one on the left is left tail. The one on the right is right tail. So over here is right tail. And then I go down to calculate. And then I double check, because that, that is confusing. Um, I double check, and this is what we're asking, right? Is the mean from our horse, so this is the mean mu from our horse, bigger than this 85 thing that we're testing against? So is the mean bigger than 85? And that's what it's asking us, right? Is the average bigger, higher than 85? That's what we're asking. So double check after you choose which uh, the left or right test and actually say it out to yourself. We're testing is the mean bigger than 85? Mean bigger than 85. And that's what we have. And so then we have the Z equals, so that's our uh, test statistic. And if we we're using a table, we would use then our standard normal distribution table to uh, find the p-value, which is uh, 0 0.019, and it tells us the x-bar and the standard deviation. Okay, so I wrote those numbers down, and let's go back to our problem. So what is the value of the sample uh, test statistics? So that's uh, 2.06 to two decimal places. And what is the p-value to four decimal places? So 0 0.019... Uh, 0 0.0195 to four decimal places. So then we're supposed to sketch the Santa distribution and show the area corresponding to the p-value. So uh, it's definitely not this one. That would be a two-sided test. And uh, uh, so it's one of these three. And so this, again, is this right-tailed so the shaded area has to be on the right. So this is the shaded area, right-tailed. And then 2.06 corresponds to where the standard deviation starts here, away from the mean. So 2.06 would be about right there. That looks right. And again, I'm getting this 2.06 from the sample test statistic. So this 2.06. So this area underneath this curve from 2.06 off to infinity is equal to this 0 0.0195. So this is the one I want. So it's right-tailed, and the area shaded is to the right. Okay, based on your answers from part A through C, where you reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. We reject small things. So 0 0.0195 is smaller than 0 0.05, so we reject it. We don't want small things, we reject them. Uh, compared to my 0 0.05. So we're going to reject. So it's one of these two top up above. And so at the alpha equals 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the data is statistically significant. So if we reject, then that means the data is statistically significant. And remember, the word statistically significant here doesn't mean it's important. So significant doesn't mean it's important. Statistically significant means that it is not due to randomness. So what we're saying is that we are 95% uh, sure that our results from this random sample of these eight trials, the results that it gave us, are not due to randomness. So that's what we're saying. So our conclusion is there is sufficient evidence at the 0.05 level to conclude 
that the glucose level is higher than 85. So I'm going to put that. So remember, when you're doing a statistical test, you have one of two outcomes. It's either we reject the null hypothesis and say that there is statistical significance. We reject and say there's statistical significance. That's one option. The other option is we fail to reject and we don't know anything. All right, so let me submit the answer and see how we did. And it looks like I got all of them correct. Okay, so if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to help.